I'm Chad Steinkamp with Northern Country Co-op and today we're going to talk about soybean disease. We're out taking a look at some beans. I was out in this field a little bit earlier today. We're actually on location. Uh, we couldn't find much for sudden death and white mold in our test plot. So we found, we decided to do the video uh, on location. So we're in a field in so, uh, just south of the border into Iowa a little bit. Uh, I was looking at this for a grower for uh, check for aphids and stuff a little earlier today. But I kind of found a little bit of a, a disease that we are worried about at this time of year. Uh, found some sudden death out here. So um, I don't know if you can zoom in here well enough, Brady. Um, you want me to just pull the plant out, or what do you think? I'm going to just pull this whole plant out. All right. So this is what a, the symptomology of sudden death will look like if, for anybody that hasn't seen it. Uh, sudden death syndrome is one of the two main uh, diseases that we kind of worry about in southern Minnesota and northern Iowa. So you can see it kind of has this intervenal chlorosis or this intervenal browning in between the leaves. Now, sudden death is a weird one because you see the symptomology of this right here, but it's actually a root disease. And we get infection early, early in the year that uh, takes this plant down, and this is just the symptomology of it as it goes on. So sudden death sounds exactly what it sounds like in the name. It'll cause the plant to suddenly die. And uh, later on, uh, after these leaves will drop, we'll actually just see the petioles drop and then we'll just have a plant that looks just like this with no leaves and it'll be brown. And we'll have small, uh, small stunted uh, pods on here and small stunted kernels. But one thing we do want to make sure is that it is sudden death because we can have another disease, brown stem rot, that can look very similar. So just to confirm, we do want to check the inside to make sure the pith looks fine. And it's not brown, like, like the pith right here is fairly white, but you can kind of see this little discoloration along here. That is the sudden death pathogen in this plant. And um, this can be very problematic uh, at times because, like I said, is, this will take this plant down to nothing at, at this time of the year when it should be packing on bushels. So what can we do about this right now? Well, really, there's nothing we can do today on this plant, but this is more of a plan for the future. Um, when this field is back into beans in 2022, we can make sure that we have a bean that can handle it, has a really high score of sudden for the sudden death score. Um, this bean here, I think, is an average at best. I talked to the grower about it, and he said it's probably an average one. Um, the other thing is seed treatment. There are two really good seed treatments that are on the market now, uh, Sultro and Olivo, Sultro from the Syngenta side and Olivo from the BASF side. And uh, they, they have a seed treatment that we can put on, on the seed itself with the other fungicides that we're putting on there and the insecticides we're putting on there that all it does is just for that sudden death. We've seen really good results here from it the last couple years. It is a little expensive, but if you have a lot of this uh, out in a field with a specific variety or a specific history, it's well worth its time. Um, the other thing is to make sure that we don't have a host plant at that point. So this one might be a field if it's bad enough to go right to corn on corn. But um, it is something to be kind of aware of. And the reason why we're trying to be aware of it, folks, is uh, we're going to be switching a lot of different platforms here the next year or so. Uh, we've had a lot of t conversations on what do we do for our herbicide program. And uh, one, of, one of the uh, talking points is to maybe switch to something like Enlist or uh, Extend Flex, which is uh, an Extend program with Liberty. But we are going to have some challenges with that depending on how good the scores are. Um, some companies have uh, better scores than others. Um, but that's part of the reason why we have to know what these things look like um, disease-wise in these fields. So we're gonna, we're gonna stop here right now and we're gonna go to another field that has some white mold. So one disease causing issues 
in our area. Uh, the other one that we worry about in this area is white mold. So this is a great example of white mold in our area. This is, you'll usually see uh, some leaves up top kind of getting kind of wilty at this time of year. And you go look underneath in the canopy and usually see brown on the stem. And then you see this little white spore. Uh, this is the start of this uh, white mold itself trying to repopulate it's, or reproduce. So white mold is a little different than the sudden death where this actually takes effect about the flowering time. So it will, it actually creates spores from a, a mushroom that comes right out of the ground, rain hits it and then spores go out into the air and then infect the, the flower itself from that point. Uh, generally we see uh, white mold cause more trouble when it's cool and damp. We've been cool, but we were fairly dry um, at times with our dews earlier. Um, the dews have picked up as of late. Um, this is when we start seeing that spread a little bit more. This will also kill the plant as the season goes on, but it won't be as uh, dramatic as sudden death is. So white mold will kind of work its way in pockets, um, usually heavier ground, wetter, compacted areas. Um, white mold is a uh, usually manure, um, high highly fertile or fertility or high fertility ground will cause some of the or be an area where white mold will be worse. And then if you've had a history of it, um, white mold needs airflow to kind of keep this thing at bay. So if we got good airflow going down our rows, sometimes white mold isn't as bad. So wider row configurations. Uh, generally have uh, less incidence of white mold but if you have a lot of uh, a lot of foliage like we do out here as you can see this is some pretty tall stuff out here that can cause some airflow restrictions so we can do a few things with this compared to sudden death uh, in season if we got a guy that has a white mold history we can do a fungicide treatment with a few products like Delaro and Miravis Neo they have to be done kind of in a sequential uh, situation. So that would mean we would have to go out here at R1 and then, which would have been about a month ago, and then come out here at about R3, which is about where we're at at this point. That can help suppress some of this at that point. Um, so that's about our only option when it comes to in season. Our other options are more cultural. So wider row configurations would have to be in part of it. So narrow rows, will cause maybe a higher incidence of white mold, although you can see it in 30s like we are in here. Um, population can play a key role into this as well. So um, that is part of the reason why we do so much work with our population studies uh, up at our test plot. How low can we go and still produce a good, corn, or a good bean crop? And that is part of the reason why we wanna see how far down we can go increase the airflow through those parts of the fields, but still not lose any yield. <clears throat> Lastly, there is a, a soil applied product that we can use called Contans. Um, it is a biological product that uh, will kind of sterilize the scolarantina or the, um, the spore uh, sporulation, where the spores kind of come out of the ground out with. And uh, that will kind of cause that to sterilize, but it's not perfect and it's it's a fairly costly method to do it. So, um, but at, at the end of the day, any of these diseases can be fairly costly. So a little bit of review. Sudden death and white mold are two diseases that we do worry about a lot in this part of the world. Um, they're not easy to manage, but they can be managed. And if we uh, take our steps and make sure we know where uh, problem areas are, we can definitely manage this crop a lot better if we know, the, the, know that information. So that's where uh, having good records, um, being, able to, um, being able to scout and find a specific spot year in and year out, that's where programs like uh, Climate Field View are really handy. We can drop a note and a drop a region report out there and figure out where some of these areas are, are, are uh, more uh, infected versus others. And, uh, and lastly, it gives us an idea of what's doing well and what isn't doing well. So 
Um, as we go on, this can be, might be a little bit more problematic, a little bit more widespread, but it's been pretty hard to find this stuff this year so far, which is great. Um, hopefully that continues, but uh, if it doesn't, uh, we can take a look at it, make sure that's what it really is. If you got any questions, give me or any of the Northern Country agronomists a call, and we'll catch you next time.